name's Kate Klein. I'm a yoga therapist and doula in the Davidson region in North Carolina. A lot of my clients who have had babies end up having something called diastasis recti. And for those of you who haven't had children, you may have never even heard of this term. Basically what it is, is the separation of the abdominal walls. So if you imagine those six pack abs, it's when the center midline starts to separate due to intra-abdominal pressure. Intra-abdominal pressure could be a baby in the third trimester, it could be weight gain. And while this predominantly affects women after childbirth, it can also affect men who have gained a lot of weight quickly. So today we're gonna to work on bringing those abdominal muscles back together. We're working with the fascia, the connective tissue, those collagen structures between the abs. And we're also working the transverse abdominals and the obliques. So those deeper levels of abdominals to start to pull this back together. So it's really subtle movements. And a lot of times if you have a baby and you're suffering from diastasis recti and you wanna start working on your abs, you go back to those pre-pregnancy ab exercises like planks or bicycles or crunches. And actually all of those exercises are contraindicated in the case of diastasis recti. They can actually make that separation worse. So today we're gonna to do some exercises that are specific to pulling those muscles back together and that'll be safe for you. And you might start to find that even in just these subtle, small exercises, you start to feel less low back pain and more comfort in your hips too. The core affects all parts of your body. And if you have a big separation in the front of your core, everything else can suffer. So welcome and thank you for joining me today. The split occurs along the midline collagen structures and the fascia, the connective tissue between the abdominal walls. So I'm going to just give you an example of how you can test to see if you have this when you're at home. So you can come onto your back, keeping your feet on the ground, and just bring your hands, palm faces your body, so that your fingertips are resting just above your belly button. And as you lift your head up, you'll start to feel your abdominal wall activate and you may feel a little bit of a separation there. So most people have about a finger or two finger width separation here. But if you have a four finger or a little bit more than that, that's where you start to feel some of the side effects of that in your hips and your low back. So you can lift your head up, not your shoulders. Shoulders stay relaxed on the ground and just notice just above the belly button, on the belly button, and maybe a couple of fingers below the belly button if there's any separation going on there. So now you can tell where you're at along this midline. And if you're finding that you have some diastasis recti, these exercises that we're gonna go into today will help to bring that together. So we're working on strengthening the fascia, the connective tissue, as well as your transverse abdominals, your deepest layer of abdominal muscle, and your obliques. So all of this is gonna start coming back together. So some of the things that you might have tried already are your traditional abdominal exercises, like bicycles, planks, crunches. Unfortunately, all of those things can actually work against you when you have diastasis recti. So they can make the separation worse. If we think about it, if you come all the way into a plank, you're activating your abs and also working against gravity. All of your organs, all of your innards are pushing against that separation, which can make it worse. So we're gonna do a lot of work on our back and only a little bit of work on hands and knees. But things that are contraindicated again are planks, crunches, bicycles, cross lateral movements. So like raising one arm and one leg. So these exercises today are specific to diastasis recti and they'll help bring all that back together. So let's go ahead and get started. Come on to your backs bringing your feet to the mat. And we're just gonna start with belly breathing. A lot of the exercises for this are very subtle. That's how you're gonna start accessing the transverse abdominals, the deepest layer of muscle in the abdominal wall. So as you inhale, feel your belly expand. And as you exhale, 
feel the belly pull in. So you're not actively pulling it in. You're just letting the breath do the work here. Inhaling through the nose. Exhale, maybe you exhale through the mouth. Just to slow your breath down a bit. Inhaling. Exhaling. Take a few more breaths like that. Really tune in to some of the subtle layers in your abdominal wall. And we're gonna to start to add a pelvic tilt to this. So as you inhale, feel your belly button lifting and expansion. Maybe your low back kind of gently comes off the mat. Exhale. Tucking in slightly, so a slight pelvic tilt. Your tailbone somewhat angles up towards your knees. It's a very subtle micro movement just in the pelvis and it's mirroring your breath. So think of the full expansion of your inhale, the full expansion of your exhale and use that time with the movement. So you're moving a lot slower than you want to. Good, we're gonna add on to that. Now we're gonna start to do some bridge, some lifting of the hips. So if you have a block, like a yoga block, feel free to use that. If you don't have a yoga block at home, a book also works, or just a pillow, a big pillow. So we're gonna bring this right between our knees here. Hands stay on the ground, palms facing the earth, shoulders are relaxed. And as you inhale, think about your belly, your diaphragm, filling up with air like a hot air balloon. So from the belly button up, it's just lifting you up as you inhale. Exhale, that slight pelvic tilt that brings you back down vertebrae by vertebrae. And your emphasis is on the exhale. So we're trying to make our exhale just a bit longer than the inhale. The exhale is the relaxation response. So as you lengthen your exhale, you're getting all of those yogic benefits of calming and relaxation. All right, let's try a few more. So inhale, lifting up. Exhale, slowly lowering down. Inhale, lifting up. Exhaling down, take five or six more of those. And on your next one, as you inhale up, just notice, are your glutes really firing? And see if you can relax your glutes. You might even have to put your hands on your tush here to notice that. Soften the glutes so that the work is mostly the low back and the abdominals. Your glutes aren't really firing. For a lot of us, if we have not so much pelvic floor strength or abdominal strength or low back strength, the glutes kick on. They're pretty hardy muscle and they like to take over a lot. So we're trying to get our glutes to relax here so that we can work all of this instead. Good, let this next one be your last. Coming up, slowly lowering down. If you had a block or a book in between your knees, go ahead and move that out of the way and just take a moment to rest and notice how you're feeling. At any point, if you feel any discomfort with any of these exercises, just take a rest and go ahead and stop that movement. So this next one is gonna be a little bit of a combo between our arms and our legs. So as you inhale, that right toe is just gonna slide across until our heel is extended out. As you exhale, we're pulling it back in. You have the option here to extend your left arm with it, only if that feels good for you. Exhaling in. 
and we'll start to alternate. So again, you could just extend the left heel or you could choose to extend the heel and the arm. Inhaling, exhaling. And on that exhale, just notice how your belly button starts to move in towards the spine. It's a very subtle movement. It's not forced, it's just naturally moving inward. And you're tapping into those transverse abdominals there. Inhaling, exhaling. Inhaling. moving slower than you want to. So it's not about quantity, it's more about the quality of the movement. The slower you go, the more subtle the movement, the more you access some of those deeper muscles. Let's do one more on each side. Good, pause and take a rest here. So for the next set, we're gonna bring our knees up as if you had a chair resting under your knees. So you want about a 90 degree angle. If that's way too much, you can always hug your knees in a little bit more, right? So you want this kind of nice 90 degree angle in your hip crease as well as your knee crease, as well as your ankle. So everything's a nice 90 degree angle. And again, if that's too much, just start to hug your knees in. You might notice that if you put your hands on your belly here, just with your knees up, that you already feel that core firing. Notice where you feel that in your body. And just tune in for a moment. Good. On your next inhale, we're gonna start to tap the right toes down. Exhale, pull back up. Keep your hands on your belly and just feel what's firing as you take these movements. Again, you're moving a lot slower than you want to, taking up the full expansion of your inhale and your exhale. Take one more on each side. And then hug your knees in towards your chest. Rock a little bit in one direction and the other. Massage out your low back here. So you're using the weight of your legs and your lower body to massage out the sacrum, the hips, the piriformis, all those muscles, the glutes. Right at the base of your spine, there's a lot of nerve endings for the parasympathetic nervous system. Right? In your nervous system, you have your sympathetic nervous system and your parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic one is the one you're in when you're stressed, when you're active, you're worried, and when you're in fight or flight. Your parasympathetic one is where you can rest, digest, relax, so you're just massaging that out and just notice how it feels as you let the weight of your legs massage your low back. Good. When you're ready, come back to that 90 degree legs. This time we're gonna take both legs. Your arms could come out to the side for balance if you need or they could stay by your low hips here. Inhaling down, exhaling up. Take four more, moving with your breath. If these are too much or you start to feel your low back pulling, you might choose to come back to just one leg at a time. Last one. Good. 
So come back to that nice 90 degree angle. This time take your arms out to the side so that your fingertips come straight out from your shoulders. And as you exhale, start to drop your knees down. It might be comfortable to let your knees fall all the way down or they might just fall kind of halfway or two thirds of the way down. We're gonna inhale them back up to center. So exhaling down, inhaling up. And you're gonna to start to feel this in the sides in your obliques. And your emphasis is as you come back up, right? So we're using all of this side body to help pull the legs up. And just notice, see my knees start to come in a little bit. Notice where your knees are shifting. See if you can really maintain integrity in that nice 90 degree angle. Take one more to each side. Good, and then come back to neutral, hugging your knees in. Take a moment to notice how you feel. And then when you're ready, start to roll over to one side, pressing yourself back up to a comfortable seat. So we're gonna to come to a hands and knees position, but before we do, I want you to think about really pulling your belly button in towards your spine, engaging your core, right? This is gonna be the only kind of place where gravity is working against us, so we wanna make sure we're really maintaining the integrity of the abdominal wall as much as you can. If at any point feels uncomfortable or you start to feel any discomfort in the low back, go ahead and come back to the exercises we just did on our back. So come to hands and knees, right? Your shoulders are right over your wrist, hips are over knees, the pelvic floor is engaged, your core is engaged. And as you inhale, we're gonna do a similar movement to what we were doing on the floor, but this time we're a little more active since we're on hands and knees. So inhale, fingertips and toes can stay on the ground. You also have the option to lift up, keeping the hip in line here with the other hip, so we're not lifting up like this or drooping, we're kind of engaged here. Exhale, pulling in, elbow to knee. Inhale, extend, again, option to lift. Exhale, coming in. Take two more, inhale, extend, and my neck is nice and long in alignment with my spine, so I'm not really crimping my neck by looking up. So your gaze is at the floor, Good. If you wanna challenge yourself and build on this, you can take your arm and leg out to the diagonal and tap down, coming up. Right, so we'll switch to the other side. You can make these as challenging as it feels comfortable for you, and you might just build over the next few weeks. So inhaling, fingertips and toes can stay on the ground. Option to lift. Exhale, pulling everything in. Same principles as before. The movement takes up the full extension of the inhale and the exhale. Option to take it out to the diagonal and to tap. Good. Pelvic floor health is important for women of all ages, regardless of whether or not you've had a baby. When doing pelvic floor exercises, I find it useful to sit on a bolster, but if you don't have one at home, you can also roll up a blanket or a pillow, and you also have the option to just sit in a normal cross-legged position. So what you're gonna do is work with the front of the pelvic floor and the back. So we're gonna be kind of alternating between the two. And the two exercises are called Mula Bandha Mudra and Ashwini Mudra. Mula Bandha will be the front of the pelvic floor, Ashwini will be the back. So to find those pelvic floor muscles, you can kind of lean forward if you're sitting like this, kind of like on a saddle, and lean into that. And as you inhale, feel the pelvic floor lift in and up. Exhale, release. 
So we're matching the movement to the breath. Inhale, lifting up. Exhale, relaxing. So the walls of the vagina start to contract and to pull in and up. Exhale, relax. For a lot of people, the pelvic floor moves as one entire unit. And what we want to try and do is differentiate between all the different muscles in the pelvic floor. So we're going to switch over to Ashwini. So as you lean back, you're going to think about squeezing the anal sphincter, kind of like the rectum, in and up. Exhale, relax. See if you can do that without moving the front of your pelvic floor. So just Ashwini, in and up, exhale down. And then switching back to the front. See if you can only use the front of the pelvic floor. If you start to practice this, what you might find is that you can actually alternate between the two. You lifting the front, Mula Bandha Mudra, and then releasing and lifting the back, Ashwini Mudra and releasing. And if you're having any trouble identifying these parts, just kind of lean back. That can give you something to feel kind of that lift and that release. We're going to take 10 of each. So if you've already done that, feel free to just rest here. And now we're going to move on to some standing postures. This exercise is called Uddiyana Bandha, which translates to upward lifting belly lock. So it really engages all of the fascia, the connective tissue, and your transverse abdominals. So go ahead and bring your feet about hip distance apart, maybe a little bit wider. And what you're gonna do is really use your breath to help with this. So as you inhale, take a deep breath in, and as you exhale, we're gonna forcefully push the exhale out. And as you do, your diaphragm lifts in and up. So once your diaphragm is totally out of air, it's kind of an upward pressure. So it's as if you're going to bring all of your belly muscles, all of your organs up into your ribs. That's kind of the motion. And we're going to pair in the kind of pelvic floor work we were doing earlier. So the pelvic floor is lifting here too. So this is what it looks like. Big inhale. So once you get rid of all your exhale, you're holding that. You're coming down to the pose, lifting everything in and up and pausing. Take that pause, and when you feel the need to inhale again, that's when you're coming up. Keep in mind if you have low blood pressure, this can kind of make you a little bit dizzy. So if you start to feel dizzy at any point, go ahead and sit down, and you can skip this one, right? So when we do this about four or five times, inhaling, exhale, Inhaling again, the spine stays nice and long, the tailbone elongates too. This sometimes can feel like a really good stretch in your low back if you've had any low back discomfort. So I'm gonna demo it for you one more time. And keep in mind if you're doing this at home, you're gonna do it about four or five times. Good. We're gonna add in a wall sit to that. So find a space against the wall if you have it, or a door, and you can walk your feet out a little bit. We're coming into a wall sit, and this is important to help keep your pelvic bowl centered. It can help you to practice walking around every day too, to make sure that you're in a really good pelvic bowl alignment, right? So the big thing here is to make sure that your knees don't go past your toes. You want them to just rest right over your ankles. So pressing your low back into the wall, core is engaged, pelvic floor is lifting, and you're just gonna hold this for about a minute or so. You can work up to a minute, taking 30 minute or 30 second sections to build up to the minute, or you can just do a full minute. It's up to you. If you've been doing wall sits for a long time, you might challenge yourself and go up to two or three minutes. So if your legs start to tremor or shake a little bit, just allow that to happen, but keep your upper body really relaxed and soft. And when you're done just coming up, 
and back up. And notice that your pelvic bowl is nice and centered. And that's how you want to be when you're walking around every day too. Making sure your tailbone drops, your pubic bone's lifted. So if you imagine your pelvis as a bowl and that it's holding a bowl of milk, for example, you don't want to spill the milk by tilting forward or by tilting back. And a lot of times the pelvic bowl gets out of alignment when you're carrying a baby. So you just wanna keep that nice and centered. And that'll also help to build some of these lower abdominal muscles up. So that's it for our exercises. We're gonna come back down to the mat and do a cool down by returning to the pelvic tilts and your belly breathing. For your cool down, go ahead and come onto your spine, hug your knees in towards your chest and just make some circles, massaging out the low back. Take any organic movement that feels good for you and then bring your feet to the mat. Come back to your belly breathing, inhaling and exhaling, pulling the belly button in towards the spine. Just a subtle movement. Thank yourself for taking the time to do something for you and to support your healing. And whenever you're ready, go ahead and roll to one side and press yourself back up. Coming up to a comfortable seat and just taking a moment to notice how you feel. The light in me honors the light in you. Namaste.